The injustice against Brock Lesnar continues as he got suspended for being misunderstood. I know how it may look. It may look like Brock Lesnar was hurting these people, but that's not the case. I guess some people just can't handle the farmer love. As far as I'm concerned, Brock Lesnar was helping the cameraman, he hugged the referee, he hugged the staff, he was trying to get to know the SmackDown roster. These city boys just can't handle the farmer love. Oh, but he attacked Adam Pearce, the WWE official. No, he didn't. After Adam Pearce suspended Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar came out and asked what Adam Pearce just said. What did you say? Say that again. Say that again, Adam. What did you say? It may look like he was aggressive towards Adam Pearce, but that's not the case at all. After all these years, you just don't know the ultimate former Brock Lesnar. There is a reason why Paul Heyman was always talking. <sighs> I know Brock will call me and be mad at me, but Brock has hearing problems. That's why he kept asking, what did you just said? And Adam Pearce was acting like a total dick. And he kinda manipulated Brock Lesnar into, you know, Brock hitting an F5. Two of them. And even that was not aggressive. I mean, look at that smile. Look at that beautiful smile. He was just playing around. Brock was playing around, you know, he's a big boy, he, he's used to playing with animals, you know, bulls, cows, so I hope Adam doesn't take it the wrong way. The point I'm trying to make is, Brock Lesnar was suspended for no reason whatsoever. Brock Lesnar was suspended for being a nice guy. How are you guys doing today? Make sure to click that like button to grow your Coco Jumbo to the moon. Now, let's start from the beginning. The show kicks off with the tribal chief, the universal champion, Roman Reigns. Some people would say not the rightful universal champion. I'm these people. And Roman Reigns is not playing around. He asks if Heyman is holding the title for him or Brock. When he puts his hand out, Heyman did the right thing with the microphone. But when he put his hand out on Thursday, Heyman threw the title in the ring. Should we work on this? Heyman hands Roman Reigns the championship. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Reigns says maybe Heyman is not great at his job, but Roman Reigns is. There's no denying at this point he's the best at what he does. He's carried the product, carried the WWE on his back for more than a year and a half now. Roman Reigns says he's the best because he smashed everyone. Daniel Bryan smashed him. Hall of Famer Edge smashed him. Cesaro smashed him. Finn Balor smashed him. John Cena smashed him. Heyman's boy Brock, I smashed him. At this point, I wasn't sure if it's the list of people he's beaten or the list of the people he smashed. I was worried this list is not gonna end. I thought he's about to talk about them women. I hope they're not gonna do the same promo with Bobby Lashley. I mean, even a three hour long Money Night Show wouldn't be enough. Maybe a network special, you know, Bobby Lashley just reading the names of people he smashed. But that's his story for another day. He asked Heyman to read what Brock Lesnar said after the show. And he said he was going to beat Roman Reigns senseless when he arrives at SmackDown. Brock is so mad he started tweeting. Not true. That is just false information again. You're spreading lies against Brock Lesnar. Suspended for no reason, only for the truth. And what actually happened, he didn't tweet. He said that after the show to the WWE officials, I guess, because that's not on Brock Lesnar's Twitter. So get your facts straight. If Brock Lesnar wants to bid him senseless, he knows where to find him. So he basically says, I'm not gonna leave this ring until Brock Lesnar shows up. So he's waiting and waiting. We got a commercial break. He's still waiting. Rain says Brock Lesnar fears him. And then we see the farmer Brock Lesnar. We saw a big brawl between the farmer and the city boy. They were fighting outside of the ring. Brock Lesnar is here for revenge. Allegedly, Brock Lesnar attacked the referees, grabbed a camera from a cameraman, allegedly attacked the SmackDown roster. Let's just say Brock Lesnar dominates. He raised the Universal Championship and said, I'm the Universal Champion. This segment was one of the highlights of the year. Love this segment and I wish this show was as good as the opening segment but unfortunately in the WWE there's this new pattern of opening a show with a great segment and closing it in the most underwhelming way possible. It's interesting how back in the day the fans viewed Brock Lesnar as this stupid farmer who doesn't talk, he can't talk, maybe he doesn't even know how to talk. 
you know, he's just here to smash people. But right now, he has a different character. He's so cool right now. It's crazy that in 2021, Brock Lesnar is clearly the fan favorite. And he beats the SmackDown roster, cameramen, referees, officials. It's not like I feel sorry for these people. They deserved it. Back in the day, it was like, oh my god, I can't believe Brock did this. I can't believe you've done this. And now it's like, yeah, of course. Don't fuck with Brock. Adam Pierce came out and I'm sure he watched my videos because the man is getting more badass every week. No individual can come out here and hold up the show or cause carnage like we just witnessed. Brock Lesnar's actions were irresponsible and unacceptable. He endangered everyone, including the fans, and he can't allow that to happen. Not on his watch. For the first time ever, I feared for Brock Lesnar's life. Not on Adam Pierce's watch. He has the unfortunate duty of informing us that Brock Lesnar is now suspended due to his actions. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. We see Brock Lesnar, and he signals that he didn't really hear what Pierce had to say. Lesnar grabs Pierce by his tie and says, I didn't quite hear what you said. Tell me again. He keeps repeating that, and Pierce says, I had no choice, Brock. Brock Lesnar is still playing around, he laughs, and we see an F5 as the crowd goes wild. I will say so myself, this was justice served, one of the most beautiful WWE moments of all time. Someone needs to make a video of top 10 most emotional moments of all time and put this at number 1. Update every video you have on most emotional WWE moments. You know, I, I used to say Edge returning was the most emotional WWE moment, now we have a new favorite. Brock Lesnar leaves the arena with a big smile on his face. Now obviously the biggest reason why Brock Lesnar got suspended might be just because he worked his dates and now WWE you know are trying to save Brock Lesnar for the bigger match and after Survivor Series he might return. Obviously we won't see Brock Lesnar for quite a while now, which is very unfortunate, but hopefully when he does, we will see Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns again. Even the commentators, I think Michael Cole said, it had the vibes of Austin versus Hogan and all of these big matches, and maybe it wasn't that extreme, it wasn't that special, but I gotta say, it really felt like a big match. It never felt like this before between the two men. Sonya Deville says that Adam Pearce is injured, she kinda blames him and says that she will handle the the championship exchange later tonight. Drew McIntyre informs Sonya Deville that he will have an open challenge to see what the superstars of SmackDown are made of. So Drew McIntyre says, I don't care who you are, just come out here and I'll kick your ass. And it was Sami Zayn with new music which, sa which sounded really generic. Not quite sure what was the reason behind that, but that was really, really generic. I know he's a heel, but he's been a heel for quite a while now and that was really unnecessary and Sammy was entertaining as always Sammy says well he's something of a locker room leader around here a gatekeeper he says Drew McIntyre is a newbie here on Smackdown so we see the match which was pretty okay that's the first match of the night it only took like 30 minutes but I can't complain because the opening segment was just a complete masterpiece. Now this was a pretty fun match, uh, but very predictable, obviously. Uh, Sami Zayn was mocking Drew McIntyre, but he ate the Claymore instead. So Drew McIntyre wins and I can't wait to see what's the first rivalry. You would think that it would be Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns, but Survivor Series is happening next month. So I'm not quite sure how are they going to handle this situation since Brock is not gonna be on SmackDown, and Drew McIntyre is not challenging Roman Reigns. I actually have no idea. Kofi Kingston introduced us to the King of the Ring, Xavier Woods, and I actually, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the segment, but it led to nothing. So he complimented Xavier Woods and did this whole traditional thing, basically announced him as a king, and that was great, it felt right, I, I appreciate that. But this didn't lead to anything new, any new rivalries, I think it's a missed opportunity not to have Happy Corbin interfere because he's the former king of the ring and he's salty about it so we could have this rivalry for the crown maybe i think that would be pretty interesting but this unfortunately led to nothing maybe so far maybe we are yet to see something with this 
King of the Ring gimmick. We saw the rematch between Mansoor and Mustafa Ali. Uh, that was a pretty okay match. And of course, Mansoor took the W, the undefeated Saudi Arabia superstar. He actually was defeated quite a lot on Raw. It only counts when he wins. Every time Mansoor is about to lose on Raw, they just turn the electricity off in Saudi Arabia so people don't see it. We just witnessed the worst debut of all time. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but that was honestly one of the worst things I've ever seen. They introduced themselves with these cringy ass lines. It was so cheesy. I can't, was it always like that? Were they on NXT? I have no idea, but that was one of the worst things I've ever seen. It was so fucking bad. My name is the great one and I'm here to say, I drink Brock's farm milk every day. I know what's the point of this gimmick. Obviously hip hop is very, popular right now you know within the younger people and i guess you can say it's pretty cool that was not cool so we saw the mini match and they won against a couple of jobbers we saw the intercontinental championship match between shinsuke nakamura and happy baron corbin well it was an intercontinental championship match it was a championship contenders match this is still a thing man this needs to be buried and because of some distractions happy corbin won the match not interested in this rivalry whatsoever and the show closes with uh, one of the most underwhelming segments we saw in the WWE, so it was supposed to be a championship exchange and they teased that, you know, I might bring back Becky two belts, so well, something, mu something must happen, right? No, they exchanged these championships like little babies, they didn't wanna do it, but they still did it. Sasha Banks came out with uh, one of the worst promos I've seen recently. Smackdown is boss time. She beats Charlotte Flair and that's how the show ends. They could have exchanged these championships in a backstage segment or didn't even show it on television. That was really unnecessary. It didn't really do anything. And you know, I got the vibe from this segment that it was written like an hour before the show. If that, just come out here and, you know, say a couple of catchphrases or whatever. I especially got this vibe from Sasha Banks. I'm not a champion, but SmackDown is boss time. SmackDown is all about the boss time. The boss is on SmackDown. I run SmackDown, I'm the boss. So yeah, this shit sucked. But that was your SmackDown, ladies and gentlemen. Like I've said, the opening segment absolutely stole the show. The rest of the show was kind of unfortunate and I was expecting a lot more from a, I guess you could say a season premiere of uh, Friday Night Smackdown. So thank you for watching the great one. Peace, love and hugs. It's been a pleasure.